This God is dawn. Like and subscribe. Comment some night. Nice love in this light. This God is dawn. God is dawn. God is dawn. Peace world. Welcome, 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 or welcome back. I'm Goddess Dawn. Thank you for joining me. I'm back with an R. Kelly case update having to do with his New York trial coming in April. R. Kelly's defense filed a motion just today requesting discovery and the government responded without haste. So I'm going to bring up both of these court filings. I have them right here. Let's read them together. They're not even a full two pages each. So just have some patience with me. Let me pull them up. Hope everyone is doing well, staying safe, staying warm, using your discernment, leading with love, all of that good stuff. Okay, so as you can see here, the letter is coming from Leonard Trial Lawyers in Chicago, and it was written on January 24th and submitted the following day, which is today, addressed specifically to Honorable on M. Donnelly, who is the New York uh, federal judge over the case. Dear Judge Donnelly, we respectfully submit this letter on Mr. Kelly's behalf as a motion to compel seeking this court to immediately require the government to produce discovery materials to Mr. Kelly and his counsel, including but not limited to 3,500 and Giglio materials. In short, this court urged the government during at least one of the party's status hearings to both cooperate with defense counsel and to produce all discovery materials sufficiently in advance of trial to allow Mr. Kelly and his counsel an adequate opportunity to prepare for trial and to avoid needless delays in, in the trial and or the continuance of the trial. It was Mr. Kelly's counsel's understanding that the government would produce all such materials 90 days prior to trial that time has come and gone. There is simply no reason for the government to continue to withhold these important discovery materials, which are undeniably crucial to Mr. Kelly and his counsel's trial preparation and to Mr. Kelly's defense and constitutional rights. Moreover, the government possesses the materials and has the abilities to produce them immediately. The only reason that these materials are being withheld is to allow the government to gain a tactical advantage and as gamemanship. The action is decidedly not one that should be based upon trial by surprise or trial with only an opportunity for one side to meaningfully prepare. All of this might be different if the government had not already had all or the bulk of these materials in its possession for years or at least many months. It goes on to say the pandemic will make it even more difficult for Mr. Kelly's counsel to take investigatory and other steps once they finally receive these materials. That is exacerbated by the fact that allegations in this case stem from events that are allegedly to have occurred literally decades ago. And by the fact that at some point, Mr. Kelly will be inaccessible while he is being relocated to Brooklyn for trial. The notion that the government would ever agree to or be forced to proceed to trial under these circumstances is absurd. In any event to date, the government has only offered to produce the first batch or phase of these discovery materials, but only to produce those materials on February 5th. The government has not offered any explanation whatsoever as to why all of these materials cannot be produced immediately, nor has the government offered any timeline for the production of the additional materials. Mr. Kelly's counsel has attempted by way of emails and otherwise to meet and confer with the government amicably to resolve these issues to no avail. However, a partial and non quantification of some of the discovery materials approximately two weeks from now will not resolve these issues. For all of those reasons, this court should grant this motion to compel and order the government to immediately produce all discovery materials to Mr. Kelly's counsel and for such other and further relief as is appropriate under the circumstances. Sincerely, Michael I. Leonard. All right, so basically his uh, R. Kelly's defense is requesting all of the discovery materials right here and right now. Um, they're claiming that the government is basically playing games. They are acknowledging that they do have the discovery, the evidence, and they're saying that they've had it for some qu quite some time. 
And they're basically just um, asking the judge to order them to hand it over in full. Uh, the government has responded to this. So let's see what the government had to say in response. Usually um, the responses from the government take a little bit longer, but it looks like they were ready for this one. Let me pull it up. Okay, here we go. So as you can see, this um, letter is again, directed to the Honorable and M. Donnelly. Shout out to uh, Judge Donnelly, by the way. No fucks given Donnelly. <laughs> And it's coming from the U.S. Department of Justice. Dear Judge Donnelly, the government respectfully submits this letter in response to the defendant's motion to compel the government to immediately produce discovery material and to request that the court schedule a status conference in the above reference manner. So right off the bat, the government's like, look, we're responding. And matter of fact, can, let's just set up a meeting so we can hash this out. They do continue. As an initial matter, the government understands that the defendant is referring to the production of material pursuant to, and they give the statute, which is the 3,500 material, and not material discoverable under Rule 16 of the Federal Rules of Criminal Procedure. While the government's production of 3,500 material is due to the defendant only after the witness is called by the United States, the government's practice is to provide such materials in advance of trial. So right there, they're saying, look, we typically do this anyway, even though we don't have to, because apparently these witnesses haven't even been called yet. They haven't been subpoenaed yet. That's what it sounds like. With respect to the 3,500 material in this case, the government has repeatedly advised defense counsel that it would provide those materials well in advance of trial but did not indicate to defense counsel that it would produce such materials 90 days in advance of trial. So they're saying that they've been telling the defense that they're gonna get them the materials in advance. They didn't give them a specific time frame, but they did um, give them the information or have been advising him, them of this over time. Last week, the government alerted the defense by email that it planned to produce the first batch of 3,500 material on February 5th, 2021 which is in less than two weeks from now and more than eight weeks prior to jury selection. And um, so basically they're saying, look, we just emailed you last week and we let you know what we're doing. Um, the government um, is sounds like making it clear that they're not trying to do anything outside of what is expected of them and um, that they have been advising the defense all along, contrary to what the defense alluded in their letter. There is a footnote and it says in advance of the production, the government intends to file a motion that such 3,500 material be subject to the terms of a protective order. So it sounds like before the government gives any of this material to the defense, they're gonna want a protective order to cover the materials because um, they don't want to take any chances. And this is why they're not giving everything up so fast and in full because they need to protect the evidence. This is a crucial case and any leaks or any type of, um, obviously, you know, a lot of the case has to do with obstruction. And this is what they're trying to prevent. All right, so the letter goes on. 35, the 3,500 material that the government intends to produce on February 5th, 2021 includes, among other items, written reports and grand jury testimony of the non-law enforcement witnesses it may call to trial. So they have non-law enforcement witnesses and they have law enforcement witnesses. And they're saying that the material that they're going to provide in two weeks is testimony from the non-law enforcement witnesses. There is a footnote here uh, says the government is continuing its investigation and reserves the right to add additional witnesses. So the investigation is still open and they're still adding witnesses. As the government identifies additional witnesses, the government will su supplement its production of 3,500 material. So as they identify their witnesses, as they serve their witnesses, they're going to provide the materials at that time. And yeah, they could be holding back 
I'm sure the witnesses, pretty sure these people are on notice, but they haven't officially been called as witnesses, probably to strategize and they're going to be required to give this information over to the defense. Again, yeah, they called it gamesmanship, playing games. There is a strategy that has to be played out because the defense is probably going to play games too and play dirty games. And um, the, the prosecution, the feds are well aware. Last paragraph reads, in addition, the government respectfully requests that the court schedule a status conference to address the viability of the current trial date in light of ongoing pandemic and assuming the trial is proceeding as scheduled, whether the government should arrange for the defendant to be transferred to the district in order to be present for the distribution of jury questionnaires beginning on March 15, 2021. The government has advised the defense of its plan to initiate the transfer of the defendant to the district but the defense has indicated that doing so will impede their ability to prepare for trial. All right, so here again, we have another conflict. The government is basically saying that in light of everything going on, the pandemic um, and the fact that um, this material, there's a lot of it, and um, there's a lot of work that the defense is gonna have to do once they receive it. So what they're saying is um, we might need more time. This could be a, pl a ploy on the defense's side also for more time by sending this letter to the judge and basically saying, look, there's a lot of material. We know they have it. They won't give it to us and they're waiting too late. We're going to need to have time with this material. This is them re ringing their alarm to say, this is not working for us right now, how this is going. And now the government is coming back and saying, well, look, we need to have a meeting, a conference so we can address the, these issues. We need to make sure that this trial date that's upcoming is even viable. There is a whole pandemic going on and they are saying, assuming the trial is proceeding as scheduled. So it's not set in stone. They wanna transfer him to the Bronx for trial and to prepare for the jury um, selection. So the government is ready to go. Don't get it mistaken or get it twisted in saying that, oh, they don't have anything. That's why the um, defense is sending this information to the judge because they don't. the government doesn't even have anything. Anyway, that's BS. If, any, if you listen to any YouTuber or any sidekick of a YouTuber on their panel talking this nonsense, um, dismiss it immediately because it's garbage and it's um, false narrative it's fake news. The government has evidence. The defense even acknowledges in their letter that they know the government has the discovery. So it's not the issue of whether or not they have it or not. They just want it in their hands. I already heard a YouTuber say this morning that the government doesn't have anything. He's going to get out. He's going to get out because um, they were supposed to have given this information a long time ago. Da, 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 da. The judge needs to know. Let's write letters. Let's do. She wants, she's encouraging her subs to write letters to the judge about instead of letting this play out legally the way it should, right? We, even the people who don't support R. Kelly, we want the trial to go as planned and we want him to face his accusers and we want them to have their day in court. And we want all this information to be public and out on the table. Once this stuff is out, it's out. And the judge, the um, evidence has already gone through its processes. So there's definitely evidence. They would not be holding this man for almost two years now if there was no evidence on the books. Don't be stupid. Like some of these people just don't use logic. They're too emotional. They got a battery in their back for either, whether it's money, whether it's R. Kelly himself promising to lick the booty hole after he gets out. <laughs> I don't know what is, is the motivation behind some of this stuff these YouTubers speak when they can speak. Because the particular YouTuber that said this stuff, she, she's very tongue twisted and can barely um, get her words out. So how people can take anything she says seriously is beyond me. Anyway. I say, let the process play out. They want to continue interfering and sabotaging this man. Then maybe the YouTuber conspiracy is real. You know, there's um, talk about 
this the whole thing just being a conspiracy against R. Kelly. And I went live just last night or actually early this morning. Go check that live out. I'm going to do a part two to that live tonight or later today. So make sure you're subscribed. Like this video also. Let me know you stop by in the comments and join me live later with Miss Kim the Warrior. And we're going to finish talking about um, R. Kelly and even um, Chris Stokes and some of the other young entertainers that unfortunately um, are said to have been taken advantage of, abused. And, um, you know, it's just a part of the music industry and all of its glory, right? I'm going to leave it here. I appreciate you as always. Much love. Till next time. Peace.